The Paris-Dakar rally remains one of, if not the singular toughest motorsporting events anywhere in the world, taking drivers across the harsh desert terrains of North Africa in a gruelling test of willpower and reliability. The 1989 edition was no different, departing the race's namesake of Paris and heading through Spain, Tunisia, Libya for the first time, Niger, Mali, Guinea and finishing in the race's other namesake, Dakar, on the Atlantic coast of Senegal, for a total distance of 6,730 miles. A total of 473 competitors would start, among the cars competing was the formidable Peugeot 405 T16, which pushed out an impressive 600 horsepower. After two consecutive wins at Dakar in 1987 and 1988, head of Peugeot Talbot Sport, Jean Todt, wanted to go for the hat-trick. Peugeot's hopes were largely falling on two of these 405s. The first was in the hands of 1981 WRC champion Ari Vatanen, and the other in the hands of six-time Le Mans winner Jackie Ix. Both had also been victorious at Dakar previously. Ix had won in 1983, and Vatanen had won in 1987. Both, therefore, were slated for success this year. Despite some strong competition, primarily in the form of Mitsubishi and Toyota, the Peugeots were dominant right out of the gate, and by the time the race reached Libya, Ix found himself leading the pack, with Vatanen and Peugeot teammate Guy Frekelan not far behind, helped along by Libyan leader Colonel Gaddafi, kindly offering to refuel all the races free of charge. What a nice man! As the route reached the border with Niger, the 1-2 of Vix and Vatanen held a two-hour lead over third. With them being so far ahead, competition between the two teammates began to rear its head. As the rest left Niger, Peugeot held the top four positions, though Vix and Vatanen remained ahead by a long shot. Ix had managed to hold on to his lead, but Vatanen was taking stage wins too, and slowly advancing towards the Belgium, eventually to within just two minutes of each other. The two drivers, trying to stay ahead of one another, began to push harder and harder, putting in some amazing times, but also beginning to push the boundaries of safety. Jean Todd, while pleased with Peugeot's domination in the car category, foresaw problems and potential accidents arising if Ix and Vatanen continued to go flat out. As the race reached Timbuktu in Western Mali, therefore, to put a stop to this, he made the fateful decision to flip a coin to decide who would roll over the line first, heads for Ix and tails for Vatanen. Unfortunately for Ix, after thousands of miles of hard driving, the coin came up tails. And so, with the running order decided, Ix and Vatanen pulled off the limit, and six days later, the two of them arrived in Dakar, Vatanen claiming his second Paris-Dakar victory, and Peugeot's third, with Ix rolling across the line in second, mere minutes behind. Unfortunately, Ix would never see the podium, let alone the top of it, ever again at Dakar. Vatanen, however, would go on to win it again in 1990 and 1991, claiming four victories overall. Peugeot, on the other hand, after winning in 1989, would go on to win it one more time in 1990, before leaving Rally altogether and shifting their focus onto endurance racing with the eventually successful 905 project. The 1989 Paris-Dakar Rally, despite his immense success across motorsports, is something that will likely remain in Ix's mind even 35 years on. It just goes to show that, no matter how much effort you put in, something as little as a coin could come along and ruin your chances of victory. Thank you so much for watching, with a very special thanks to Brum Brum Brin, Jonas and Thomas Bradley, who are very generously donating at the highest tier on my Patreon. Just £1 a month is an amazing help, and I also have socials, links to them are in the description below. Again, thank you for watching, and take care.